Greetings, dear ones. I want to talk with you today about the powerful configuration of the lunar nodes, south node in Scorpio, north node in Taurus, that are moving into conjunction with Uranus. They will be within five degrees of Uranus starting June 14th of next month and continue in that tight conjunction with Uranus right beside the North Node through January of 2023. But the lunar nodes will be in Scorpio and Taurus from this past January through July of 2023. Remember that the lunar nodes are calling us into what we're meant to be working karmically energetically in this profound time. They're guiding us to see what the growing edge is for us individually and collectively and where we should be focusing our attention and our energy. So what does this mean? Before we get in to the deeper layers of what this time is about, I would ask that you take a deep breath Breathe in and out, focusing on your heart. Imagine breathing in and out of your heart and allow yourself to be in this process with me from your heart, not your mind, from your heart. As I said in my last video, we know what's true when we listen to our hearts. And part of what's critical in this intense time that we're in with these lunar nodes in Scorpio and Taurus is that we work this process from the heart. One powerful meditation that I highly recommend is to really slow your breath, taking in slow in breaths, releasing with the out breath and focusing on your heart and taking time to tune in to your heartbeat. Allow yourself to be in that process and it calms your body, helps you come out of your mind and into your heart. And then you begin to attune to your own heartbeat. You are able to then attune to what you're feeling, what you're experiencing. And as you continue to allow yourself to connect with your heart, you can expand and begin to feel your heartbeat, attuning to the heartbeat of the earth, attuning to the heart of the cosmos and feel yourself energetically expand and your consciousness will expand. I'll give you some resources at the end of the video for some of how you can work the process that I'm talking about, including that heart meditation practice. One way I do that heart meditation is to breathe in to the count of six, hold that in breath for two seconds as I attune to my heart and my heartbeat, and then breathe out to the count of eight. Remember six is the energy of life and love. So when you breathe in to the count of six, you're breathing in the energy of life and love and can feel that gratitude and thankfulness for that in your heart, which helps your heart energy expand. And then when you hold that breath, you're attuning to the sound of your own heartbeat, the pulse of your heart. And when you release to the count of eight, remember that number is about the energy of harmony and balance. So you're breathing in life and love and breathing out whatever is out of balance for you to come back into harmony. It's a beautiful meditation practice. And it's critical in this time because South Node in Scorpio. What is it that we're working from the past 
south node. It's the energy of Scorpio, which is whatever is deep within us emotionally that's unresolved, whatever trauma we carry, whatever's hidden in the shadows within us, that is what's being called into awareness in this time in order, North Node and Taurus, for us to move into new forms and into new ways of being in our experience on this earth. South Node in Scorpio is about taking the time to face what's unresolved within us. What we've buried, what we've repressed, what we've split off from the past, our past traumas and wounds, conflicts, unresolved issues, all of that is being activated right now for us to face it and heal it. I'm sure many of you are feeling that and we're seeing it in the collective right now. What are we seeing going on in the collective? Increasing violence, war, exploitation, political polarization, reactivity, increasing gun violence, increasing depression, anxiety, suicides. These are some of the full spectrum of what happens with those unresolved issues if we aren't working them consciously. Whatever is in the shadow, whatever is unresolved for us, Scorpio, in the depths of our emotions, if we're not working it consciously, we will either act it out or internalize it. If you're acting it out, it's about increasing reactivity or projecting those unresolved issues in yourself onto others and, and being more and more polarized with others because you're trying to distance from the shadow within you that you don't want to face. It can then lead to increasing violence or abuse, sexual acting out, destruction of each other, of the earth, leading ultimately to war, which we're seeing in the world right now. That is an acting out of unresolved shadow issues individually and collectively. But we also can internalize and act out on ourselves what's unresolved within us. And that can lead to increasing depression, self-destructive behaviors, a lack of honoring of ourselves. It can even ultimately lead to suicide. So when we have those unresolved issues that we are trying to repress and unwilling to face, it will get played out directly or indirectly on ourselves or others. And what I'm seeing right now is that whatever is in the shadow is getting activated and is coming to the surface, whether we want it to or not. So the choice point for us at this time is, are we willing to face those issues consciously? And when we do, then it is an incredible context for healing and transformation. Remember Scorpio, if it's worked unconsciously, is trauma, abuse of power, victimization, death. Scorpio, when it's worked consciously and is really in alignment with its deeper meaning, is the cauldron of transformation. We get pulled into the underworld to face those hidden, buried aspects of ourselves in order to transform and emerge empowered and more fully in our whole selves. Then we have that capacity to work the North Node in Taurus. And what does that mean? Taurus, that awareness that all of life is sacred, the earth is sacred, being embodied here is sacred. 
our physical bodies are sacred. It allows us then to live our day-to-day -day lives, to manage our resources, to establish our values in a way that is honoring the sacred within us and in all of life around us. And with Uranus coming into play, Uranus is the truth teller. Uranus cuts to the heart of things. It cuts through illusion. It is calling us to face whatever it is that we haven't faced and worked within ourselves, individually and collectively. And then as we work that process consciously, Uranus gives us that clarity and insight as to the new forms we can move into. And it's extraordinary, the consciousness of the cosmos that's calling us to do this deep inner work as we prepare for Pluto's movement into Aquarius, which will begin March of 2023. And then it's at the end of 2024 that Pluto moves fully into Aquarius. So we are being guided to do this inner work, to heal, to transform, to face what's hidden in the shadows in order to move more fully through that threshold into the Aquarian age, into the higher consciousness, into the new paradigms. But we can't move into those new paradigms or higher consciousness if we're repressing and splitting off these unresolved aspects of ourselves held in the shadows. In clearing that and healing that, we're ready to move into those new forms. So this is the process that we're being called to be in right now. And many of us are experiencing it. Not only are we seeing the increasing turbulence in the world, which is the acting out of these shadow aspects of the collective that are up at the surface right now, but we feel it individually. As I've talked to many of you and as I experience in my own process, many of us are feeling like issues we thought we'd resolved in the past are activated again, or we're finding ourselves in challenging dynamics in relationships, or we're feeling increasing depression or anxiety, or a loss of a sense of self-worth, or a lack of clarity about our purpose. All of those are signals to you that it's time to face whatever is hidden in the depths that needs to be resolved within you. I would also encourage you to pay attention to what's going on physically right now. We're experiencing a lot of changes with these cosmic energies coming in, but I also believe that those traumas that are deeply buried within us, that are below our level of consciousness, often will activate symptoms in our bodies as a way to get the message through to us. So I encourage you to take this time to honor whatever you're feeling coming up emotionally, hold with compassion whatever symptoms you're experiencing physically, and a beautiful way that I talk about in depth in the book I co-authored with Christina Lee, From Trauma to Freedom, a beautiful way to work that process to bring those issues into consciousness is do inner dialoguing with those parts of yourself. Remember that whatever is hidden in the shadows within us, the repressed memories, unresolved wounds or trauma, it's still alive within us. And if it's coming up, either you experience yourself getting reactive, getting angry, getting triggered, or you're feeling increasing depression or anxiety, or you're getting these body symptoms, take time to dialogue with those feelings, those symptoms, those parts of yourself. If you're having recurring headaches, sit down and journal or meditate and dialogue with that part of yourself, with that part of your body. 
say to those headaches, I believe you have a message for me. I want to hold space for you and hear what your message is. Guide me to understand what I'm needing to see, what I'm needing to feel, what I'm needing to face. It's been extraordinary to me how enlightening that can be and how rapidly it can help us heal at the physical level when we pay attention to what the body is trying to tell us when we're not getting it in other ways. But also take time to dialogue with those feelings that are coming up. Take time to meditate, to journal, tune in, say to that depression, tell me what part of myself you're connected with and what is it I need to know. Share with me your story. I hold sacred space to hear you, to be here with you. As Rumi talks about, invite those shadow parts in. Invite them to tea. Sit down and listen to them. Because beneath the wounds lie some of our greatest gifts that we can't access unless we create that context for healing and for resolving what it is that's unresolved in the shadows. Remember that Pluto, Scorpio, is the energy of alchemy, of finding the true gold in ourselves as we burn away what no longer serves us and clear away what has been in the shadows. So it can be a profound time if we work this consciously. And remember that healing comes from not fixing things, changing things, controlling things. Healing happens when we allow that unresolved issue or that part of ourselves to come forward, to be held in compassion, and to be seen and heard. That is profoundly healing. Then we're able to feel what was unresolved. We're able to hold that part with love and tenderness and compassion. The feeling can release, and then we're able to integrate the gifts of that part of ourselves and release the trauma. This is the gift of this time if we work it consciously. And how do we do that? What's important is to foster a strong witness self. It's only when we have that observing part of ourselves that can see when we're getting reactive, that can see that we're caught in depression and create a query. What is this about? You know, it becomes a dialogue then between the witness self and the personality self, where the witness self is not identified with the depression, is not caught or mired in the reactivity, but is saying, you're really triggered right now. What's this about? Let's explore this together. What's important to remember is we all have this soul self within us, this consciousness continues across our lifetimes. And that soul self allows us to have a witness self that can then observe what's going on in the story of this incarnation and this personality and guide us to observe it and work it consciously so that we are on a path of growth and evolution. We are here on earth to transform, to grow in love and wisdom. But if we're operating unconsciously and pushing into the shadows these unresolved issues from past lives from this lifetime, then we continue to act out those unresolved issues and we don't grow and evolve. And we end up harming ourselves and harming others. And that is what's at play in the world right now. And we have the capacity to change that. 
as you listen to other astrologers, you're going to hear, and I agree with a lot of what they're saying, about Uranus conjunct the North Node in Taurus. Expect Earth changes. Expect radical shifts in our global economies. Expect shifts in our food supplies. We're seeing all of that already playing out. However, we need to remember that transits, these planetary energies and the movement of the lunar nodes are not deterministic and predictive. They're energy patterns. Everything is energy and everything is interconnected. And when we work with those energies consciously, we can activate the gifts of them and help support the manifestation of the most profound ways that they can play out and are meant to play out. It's when we work with those energies unconsciously or we disconnect from them that we're in danger of experiencing the worst aspects of them. So it's important to know that yes, are we seeing a lot of earth changes and are those related to what we as humanity are doing in destructive ways to the earth? Yes. Are they also related to these cosmic energies and solar energies bombarding us right now? Yes. And how they manifest is influenced by our consciousness. Our consciousness and our energies are interconnected with the weather, with the earth, with each other, with all of life. So as you take responsibility for being in your own healing process and in working this time consciously, you're not only supporting the healing and transformation of yourself, but you're supporting the healing and the transformation of the global community and of our planet. This is the profound meaning of this time that we're in. And as you work that process, I would encourage you to keep focusing on coming back to the heart. Part of the challenge of this time is we are so caught in our minds and that leads to increasing disconnection from each other, increasing polarization, increasing confusion about what's real, what's true, what's illusion, what's going on. As you come into your heart, that allows you a deeper knowing of what's true, what's real, and guides you in coming into a rhythm that is healing for yourself physically. Remember, as the HeartMath Institute talks about, our brains are meant to be entrained by our hearts, not our hearts by our brains. And a lot of our heart disease, heart attacks, issues around our hearts being out of balance are because we are so caught in our minds. But when we come back to our hearts and let our hearts and train our brains, then we feel and know what's true, what's real. We remember our interconnectedness with all that is. We can feel our heartbeat resonating with the heartbeat of the earth. We can allow our hearts to expand and that magnetic field to connect to the energies of the earth and sky and the cosmic consciousness that is guiding us and supporting us in this time. So again, I encourage you to meditate, focusing on your heart, breathing in and out from the heart, attuning to your own heartbeat. That focus allows your body to calm and allows you to open to what may be in your unconscious that's needing to come to the surface. And when that starts to emerge, allow yourself to take that time to do the inner dialoguing, the inner exploration, 
to hold that space for what's needing to come into consciousness. Hold whatever that is with compassion and then you can feel it and release it. And then you're on a journey to move more and more fully into that energy of the North Node in Taurus. Being fully embodied and present here in a sacred way, in a clear way with Uranus giving you insights, guiding you through synchronicities, showing you the way into these new forms that allow us to manifest a life in which we can thrive individually and move into new forms of community with each other that are about equality, compassion, justice, diversity, acceptance of each other. But again, we can't move in to the fifth dimension. We can't move into these higher forms of consciousness if we haven't dealt with what's in the shadows. So this is such a profound time to be in that underworld journey in order to transform and heal, in order to emerge more whole, more integrated, more in alignment with our true selves and our soul selves to be able to step across that threshold into the Aquarian age and into the capacity to be in a radically new world together. I'll talk more in my next videos about the powerful new moon coming up May 30th and the fact that the full moon happens on June 14th when Uranus moves within five degrees of the North Node. We are being supported by these profound energies of the earth and sky. When we come back to our hearts, come back into connection, come back into communion with the energies of the earth and sky and remember our interconnectedness with each other and with all of life. I send you lots of support and ask that we hold that compassion with and for each other as we do this deep Scorpio work in order to move into these new forms and into that remembrance of the sacredness of our lives and of all of the life around us. Blessed be.